Hi again! My name is Rodolfo Eric Angat, your teacher in Earth and Environmental Science. Today we'll be discussing about Earth's motion in space. Our essential question for this lesson is, how do I describe the motion of Earth in the solar system? And this lesson will cover standard 1.1.1. In this lesson, our aim is to learn the following or to achieve the following. The first one, I can explain that earth rotation causes days and nights. The second one, I can say that planets orbit in a counterclockwise direction ever since the solar system was created. The third one, I can explain the differences between rotation and revolution. The fourth one, I can explain why we have leap years. And the last one, I can explain why we have seasons. This is an artist representation of our Milky Way galaxy. Our Milky Way galaxy is an example of a spiral galaxy. In one of the arms of the Milky Way galaxy is our solar system. Our sun is located in one of its outer arms. One journey of our solar system around the center of our Milky Way galaxy, this is the center, is called a cosmic year. And it's approximately 225 to 250 million year Earth years. So it takes millions of years for our solar system to go around the center of our Milky Way galaxy. Again, the Milky Way galaxy is composed of many systems, not just our solar system. Earth is the third planet in our solar system, and Earth is divided into hemispheres. The northern hemisphere is where the United States is located. That's where the United States is. The southern hemisphere is where Australia is located. In the Eastern Hemisphere, Australia is also located. So Australia is located in the Southern and Eastern Hemisphere of our planet. While the United States is located in the Western Hemisphere. There it is. So the United States is located in the northern and western hemisphere of our planet. Northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere, eastern hemisphere, and western hemisphere. So here we have the North Pole, here we have the South Pole, the line that runs across from the West to the East is called the Equator and it is found at zero degree latitude, while the line that runs across from the North Pole to the South Pole is the prime region and it's also located at zero, but this time longitude. Of course, one have to remember that those are imaginary lines. Here, we see the Earth's axis. So that's Earth's axis right there, the yellow line that you see on the north and on the south. It's also an imaginary line. Earth is tilted on its axis, which causes it to have seasons. On the other hand, Earth spins on its axis, 
which gives us nights and days or you can say also days and nights earth is tilted on its axis providing earth with varying seasons here in the united states we have four seasons we have summer we have fall we have winter and we have spring in other countries however those which are closer to the equator they only have two seasons it can be the dry season or it can be the rainy season those countries that are close to the equator do not experience winter so they do not have snow there while those countries who are in the temperate region or a little or farther away from the equator just like the United States, experience four seasons, which includes winter. Those places that are close to the poles, like the North Pole and South Pole, almost always experience winter-like weather. It is really, really very cold. And this different seasons happen because of the uneven distribution of sunlight on Earth's atmosphere and surface. And this is the reason why Earth's tilt is the one that is responsible for the seasons on Earth. It is the reason why we have seasons and they rhyme, right? Now, let's go back and review. Earth's rotation on its axis causes day and night. The hemisphere of Earth facing the sun experiences daytime, while the hemisphere that is facing away from the sun experiences nighttime. And the changes from day to night happens because Earth rotates on its axis. Earth's tilt on its axis causes seasons. And how does that happen? The uneven distribution of heat causes Earth seasons. How does the uneven distribution of heat happen on Earth? Mm, I think I know the answer. It's because Earth is tilted on its axis. If we look at this one, Earth tilt is at about 23.5 degrees. The same amount of sunlight reaches Earth. However, when the sunlight reaches the surface of the Earth, this sunlight is either directly focused or at straight angle or at a low angle. Sunlight that hits the equator strikes more directly, so the sunlight is more intense, almost like a laser beam. The light is so focused that it can even blind someone's eyes. So this direct focus of sunlight causes, place, causes places near the equator to experience very hot seasons if you go higher from the equator both to the north and to the south the shape of the earth which is the curvature that you see here causes sunlight to spread more so you'll see here that the same amount of sunlight reaches Earth's surface on this area, but that same amount of sunlight is spread in more area compared to this area here. Thus, the temperatures in these areas here and here are colder compared to the temperatures here. Now, if you go even higher, 
this is the higher latitudes, you will notice that the same amount of sunlight is now reaching Earth at a low angle. So that amount of sunlight is spread in a bigger area compared to this area here. Thus, it's a lot colder. This is the reason why the temperatures in the varying latitudes of Earth differ and the reason why that is happening is because of the uneven heating that results from the spreading or focusing of light. Here it's directly focused so it's hot. Here it is more spread, it's cooler. Here the sunlight is so spread that it is very cold. And that is what we mean by the uneven distribution of heat. And this one causes the poles to be colder than the equator. Now, how does the tilt of the earth influence the seasons? Look at this one. The northern hemisphere, this one, is leaning towards the sun. If the northern hemisphere is leaning towards the sun, the season in the northern hemisphere is summer. On the other hand, let's go to the southern hemisphere. The southern hemisphere is leaning away from the sun. You see this axis here? But remember, this is only imaginary. You don't actually see this even if you can go to space. But you'll see that the southern hemisphere, this is the southern hemisphere, it is leaning away from the sun, that's the sun, and you'll see the axis is leaning away from the sun. This causes this place here to experience winter. Let's have another example. In this one, the northern hemisphere is leaning away from the sun and that's why it's winter in the northern hemisphere. While in the southern hemisphere, it is leaning towards the sun. That is why it is summer in the southern hemisphere. You might be asking, how about spring and fall? When it is spring or fall, either spring or fall, that is, neither the, of the hemisphere is leaning towards or away from the sun. And we'll be learning about that when we focus our topic on the seasons on Earth. For now, we'll be learning on the effect of Earth's tilt on seasons. Let's continue. That is the southern axis. And you see that it's leaning away from the sun, so it's winter here. Here, it is also winter. The difference between the two is that it's nighttime here and it's winter. Here it's daytime and it's winter. So the difference is nighttime and daytime. The next one, you see the axis. Again, these are only imaginary lines. It is summer because the, the northern hemisphere is leaning towards the sun. Here it is daytime and here it is nighttime. Is it day or night in the United States? Where is the United States? It's right here. So it is nighttime because it's on the other side. Next one. 
Rotation causes days and nights. Is it winter or summer in the United States? It is summer because the northern hemisphere is leaning towards the sun. Tilt causes seasons. Is it day or night in Asia? Where is Asia? Can you guess? Or you already know? The answer is daytime. This is Asia right here. This is North America and this is South America. That's Asia and it's daytime. Is it winter or summer in Australia? Australia should be somewhere here. The answer is winter because the southern hemisphere is tilted or leaning away from the sun. Now, the earth is not always equidistant from the sun. Sometimes the earth is very close to the sun and sometimes earth is very far away from the sun. The average distance between the earth and the sun is 93 million miles. I said average because it's, the distance is not always the same. Why? Because the orbit of earth around the sun is elliptical. It is not circular. And this is one of the laws under Kepler's law. Kepler's first law states that the orbits of planets are elliptical. So at some point, Earth is closest to the sun. And when it is closest to the sun, it is winter in the United States. Because Earth is closest to the sun in January 3. It's winter to us. Earth can also be farther away from the sun. We call that aphelion. And the season in the United States when, the, when Earth is farthest away from the sun is summer. And that happens in July 3. Earth is farthest away from the sun. The seasons does not really influence, or let me say, the distance from the sun does not really influence the seasons. Because what really influences the seasons is Earth's tilt. And that's why I discussed to you the perihelion. And perihelion is when Earth is closest to the sun and it is winter in the United States. And uphelion when earth is farthest away from the sun and it is summer in the united states those concepts tells us that the distance is not really the reason for the seasons but the earth's tilt okay How do you describe the motion of Earth in space? You'll see the arrows here. The sun is spinning and revolving counterclockwise. The Earth is spinning counterclockwise. And it is also revolving counterclockwise. And so was the moon. All the planets in the solar system orbit around the body center in a counterclockwise direction. And this has been happening since the birth of the solar system after the Big Bang. See the spinning 
and the orbiting, it's all counterclockwise. See the spinning of Earth from the west going to the east. That is counterclockwise. Counterclockwise is this direction. There are only two planets in our solar system that do not spin counterclockwise. Of course, all of them orbit around the body center of the solar system counterclockwise, but not all of them spin or rotate on their axis in the counterclockwise direction. Which two planets in the solar system do not exhibit the prograde motion? When you say prograde motion, prograde motion means that the planet is orbiting or revolving around the body center of the solar system in a counterclockwise direction and at the same time is also spinning or rotating in a counterclockwise direction. That is what we call as prograde motion. Now, which two planets in the solar system do not exhibit the prograde motion, instead exhibits the retrograde motion? Look at the pictures. Counterclockwise. Ooh, this is not counterclockwise. This is clockwise. Counterclockwise, 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 counterclockwise. This one is not counterclockwise. This is upside down. Counterclockwise. So I guess you know the answer. They are Venus and Uranus. They both have retrograde motion. Okay? How do you compare the length of time of Earth rotation and revolution? Rotation takes 24 hours or one day. It's a little bit less than that, but we'll have 24 hours for now. And revolution takes about 365 days or one year. Exactly 365.25 years. Okay? Now, our year is only 365 days, but Earth's revolution is 365.25 days to be exact. This 0.25 days is the reason why we have a leap year. Every year we owe 0.25 day, about a quarter of a day. On the fourth year, we already owe one day and that is why every four years one day is added to the month of February and that is to pay back what we've owed which is one day in every four years and that's the leap year so we have a leap year every four years in order to pay for our debt of 0.25 day every year because every because one year is only is 365 days but the earth's revolution is 365.25 days rotation causes days and nights while the revolution causes our views of the positions of the stars to change except for Polaris kind of observe the night sky during summer. Take a picture of the stars that you see. After summer, it will be fall. Facing the same direction in the night sky, take a picture again of the stars. Do you see the same stars in the same location? No. They've changed. And then after fall, we have winter. You do the same thing. Will you be able to see the same stars in the same location? No, you will not. And then after winter, 
come spring look at the same sky again and take a picture and compare them will you be able to see the same stars again no you will not during the early years farmers use the stars to know when to start planting and harvesting the stars told them about the seasons but now thanks to science we have a more accurate way to know when the seasons begin and when they end so that's how it works so the seasons change because of earth tilt we have days and nights because of rotation and our views of the stars in the sky during the night change because of Earth's revolution around the body center of the solar system. As a review, the universe is continuously expanding and as objects move away from Earth, as stars move away from Earth, you see the red ship. They turn more red. As stars move closer to Earth, you see the blue ship they become more blue. That's the red ship. Objects moving away from Earth exhibit the red ship. The speed of Earth's revolution increases the closer it is to the sun. That's called perihelion and decreases the farther it is from the sun. That's called uphelion. So faster, slower. It's closer, it's faster, and slower when it's farther. The orbit of planet like the Earth are elliptical based on Kepler's first law. And the revolution or orbiting of a planet is in a counterclockwise direction. I hope the things that I've explained to you will help you answer the questions in our MC lessons. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. See you again next time.